Taman Nasional Gunung Halimun Salak terdiri dari dua ekosistem, yaitu ekosistem Halimun dan ekosistem Salak. pH-nya itu antara 4 sampai 6, itu cocok sekali untuk teh. Di sini tanahnya emang bagus untuk dipakai tanaman gitu, air juga bagus. One of the most strategic factory of Nakua is in Gunung Salak. Kami tinggal dan hidup di atas pegunungan, di atas di tengah hutan. Kami menyebut campur gitu dan masih menjalankan tatanan tradisi yang memang menjadi titipan dari leluhur. Landscapes mean many things to many people. In the past, these different aspects of a landscape have been managed in isolation. But a shift is happening. Conservation organisations, development groups, companies and governments working in the same area are starting to reach out to each other to tackle problems together. And as the global population grows and we need to produce more, more sustainably on less land, this new approach offers a way forward. So a landscape approach is essentially managing complex landscapes in an integrated fashion and a holistic fashion incorporating all of the different land uses within those landscapes into a single management process. We need a landscape approach because there are many different uses of, of our land and our natural resources. And we need to balance these. We need to balance across forestry, across agriculture, water resource management, biodiversity, conservation, and the needs of people. So this is uh, Gunan Halimun Salak National Park. Considering we're close to one of the mega cities of the world, Jakarta. It's an amazing repository of, of the last areas of biodiversity of the area. But more crucially, this landscape provides a very important catchment for watersheds and provides most of the water for the entire Jakarta Basin. Javan leopards and gibbons still thrive here, but the park is no remote wilderness. It's located in Indonesia's most populous province and is surrounded by agriculture, plantations, cities and industry. Sebenarnya ada salah satu persepsi bahwa konservasi itu adalah hanya untuk menjaga hutan, satwa seperti itu. Kami katakan sangat tidak mungkin. Artinya kalau hanya berpikir ke arah situ. Dan sudah otomatis kita harus mengakomodir yang namanya kebutuhan hidup. Oke, okay, be careful. One of the national park's strategies for doing this is to encourage tourism in the park. Kebelangsungan keutuhan hutan ini bagi bisnis ya istilahnya saya dan keluarga saya yang ada di sini ya sangat penting sekali dengan adanya. Tapi kalau tanpa adanya hutan ini kemungkinan juga turis itu nggak bakalan banyak yang datang ke sini. Gitu. The homestays provide income for a few, but most of the communities living in or near the park make their living from agriculture, farming or working on the area's famous tea plantations. Just over the ridge, the Kasepohan traditional community practice rice agriculture. Sebagai keseharian, sebagai titipan, sebagai adat yang harus dilakukan oleh masyarakat adat Banten Kidul. Menanam padi satu tahun satu kali. They also use forest products for weaving, food and fuel wood. This landscape attracts industries too. The mountains of Halimun and Salak generate generous quantities of a valuable resource, water. Global company Danone Aqua bottles 5 billion litres of water each year in Indonesia. 15% of that comes from the slopes of Mount Salak. Uh, to today the quality of the water is very, very good. So this is uh, uh, really protected by the mountain and the forest and the Gunung Salak. Aqua is one of many companies and organizations engaging with the National Park in various conservation and development initiatives, starting the kinds of conversations that are essential for an integrated landscape approach. Of course, it doesn't always go smoothly. Kalau saya melihat bahwa keberadaan Taman Nasional bisa dikatakan bagus karena sama-sama menjaga hutan. Juga tidak bisa dikatakan bagus kalau terlalu menekan kebutuhan masyarakat. Misalnya dengan tidak membolehkan masyarakat menebang untuk kebutuhannya sendiri. Nah, tantangannya tetap pasti ada karena sampai uh, pada saat mengawali kita bagaimana untuk berkolaboratif, artinya uh, perbedaan pendapat itu muncul. Today, all of the stakeholders that are playing in the same system, 
do not have the same objective. You know, for example, like uh, us, we want to protect the forest, but maybe some of uh, the industry do not think about that, so we are not going in the same direction. So in fact, uh, win-win solutions in most tropical landscapes have proved to be somewhat elusive. And the real tenet, if you like, of, of integrated management of, of landscapes and the landscape approach is recognizing for trade-offs and negotiating for trade-offs so that all the stakeholders come to a, an agreement at which there are winners and losers, but the, the, you win more and, and lose less, if, if you like. And, and that's really the, the fundamental behind the landscape approach. Organisations and donors need to be flexible too, as landscapes are constantly changing, while new pressures arise. Itu yang selalu kita khawatir dengan adanya pembalakan liar. Kalau di keseluruhan Halimun gitu, kebanyakan yang kemungkinan sangat cepat mengganggu atau menyebabkan kerusakan itu adalah salah satunya peti, penambang mas tanpa izin itu. The biggest threat is changing the the forest into the um, residential land. Things change daily, things change weekly, things change monthly, but you need to adapt to those changes. And often projects are constrained by their project document which says this is what we're going to do in a landscape and that's sort of followed um, almost to rote. But you can't manage a, a complex landscape like that. You need to have that adaptability and the flexibility to change. It's not easy, but despite the huge range of competing interests, everyone has a stake in ensuring landscapes continue to provide environmental services into the future. Kalau kita kehilangan Gunung Salak, berarti uh, kita akan kehilangan yang sangat besar bagi perusahaan ini. Yang harus dijaga yang pertama hutan. Karena hutan selain untuk melindungi kita semua juga untuk mendatangkan air. Karena kalau Taman Nasional misalkan sampai berubah, otomatis kesuburan perkebunan akan berkurang juga. Elemen yang penting adalah bumi. Gunung Halliman is a very extreme example, if you like, of where we should be applying a landscape approach. It's uh, in an area of extremely high population pressure, um, lots of other pressures on the land, um, but it's an incredibly complex lands landscape because of it. And something that seems to be working. We have a, you know, 40,000 hectares of pretty much intact rainforest up, up there. And if there's anywhere where a, where a landscape approach could be tried and tested, it's, it's here. And this is where all of the different interests and stakeholders have to be talking to each other. And this shouldn't just happen uh, on Gunung Halloween. This is an example of what should be happening in all the landscapes that we're interested in. In terms of the meeting here in Warsaw at the COP, uh, a landscape approach is, is so important because the way we manage landscapes affects both climate mitigation and climate adaptation. The scope of the challenge that we face is enormous. It's global and it's unprecedented. What we need to do is to come together to take the many success stories that we have from all over the world, bring them together, learn from them collectively and apply them at a global scale.